Hello and welcome to True Crime Diary, a light-hearted podcast on a serious subject. Every two weeks we look back through true crime stories to discuss an event that took place on this week in history. I'm your host Mark Decano and with me as always are my friends Jed Lester. Hello. And Rue Turner. Hello. So the date we're looking at this time is the 22nd of February and in 1933 a murder was committed yep. by a nefarious conspiracy of criminals. But the man who died, the victim, unsung in his lifetime, has become infamous throughout the ages as Durable Mike Malloy. He's also known as Iron Mike Malloy. He's also known as the Irish Rasputin, <laughs> or the really? Rasputin of the Bronx, um, and Mike the man they couldn't kill mm-hmm. until, until they killed him. Until they killed him. Until, until they killed they The man they eventually killed. <laughs> so I, Mike Tyson's nickname was Iron Mike. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> Is he alive? Surely it didn't He's come from that. Durable. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. it's from being yeah indestructible. Yeah, I know. Well, anyway. Well, no, it's like the Iron Lady, isn't it? Yeah, all right, fine. Anyway, I don't know anything about this, as usual. <laughs> you surprise so, me. <laughs> do continue. <laughs> so, picture the scene. Yes, where New are we York, talking about? New York City. Oh, right. Why did I think it was in Ireland? Because he's did Irish. Did you say he was Irish? <laughs> oh, sorry, right there. Yeah. He's from County Donegal. Right. So, northeast of Ireland. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah, County Donegal is the, the northeastern tip. Of Southern Ireland. No, of Northern Ireland. Oh, right. Right, okay. Anyway, he was in New York. He was in New York. (laughs) He's not in Ireland at all. Homeless man. Right. Living in a depression era United States. Yes, middle middle of it. So he was a uh, a firefighter. Um, And he was homeless. He was a firefighter in New York before the Wall Street crash. Right. When he found himself homeless and out of work. Mm. And he was an alcoholic. Yep. How do you like that? He sure hit the skids. Do you think after the crash, people didn't stop burning things? True that. Or require, need the burning things to be put out. <laughs> yeah. So is that where, because the, the city, in, in the 70s, they always go on about, the city was broke. Um, and I never fully understood what that meant. But it was that and it also a, because of the depression, not the depression, the crash. Yes. It was a time of austerity. Like, and even very, very important things like that. And he yeah. was... yeah. They were cutbacks and redundancies. Cut backs, right, okay. Plus, he was a hal- an alcoholic. So whether oh, that helped yeah, in the uh, yeah. whether he became an alcoholic from being a homeless and unemployed, or he was an alcoholic and they said, so "No, they we're going to get rid of anybody." Got get rid of him. him. Yeah, sure, sure. John Cold Malloy. Yeah. Wobbly Hose Malloy. <laughs> Wobbly. Yeah, Ooh, that could be anything. <laughs> Not <laughs> aiming the hose at the cor- <laughs> the house that's on fire, Malloy. Malloy. Yeah. <laughs> So, are we talking um, mid this alcohol thing? Mid alcohol thing. Prohibition. Uh, Twenty no, to thirty-three. Thirty-three. So, so the, bang on the year. It's the end of the year. Wow. So it was a bit rubbish in New York. Yeah. To be it's homeless been rubbish for some time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Depression. Crash. Prohibition. Homeless. Alcoholic. Yes. Uh, and he's gonna gonna be murdered. <laughs> and he's gonna be murdered. <laughs> Hang on. So how was he an alcoholic? If he was a homeless in speakeasies, it was pro- prohibition in the Bronx area of New York City. Yes. In the north, it's the north the of north. the north. <laughs> it's in the north of Man. It's north of Manhattan. It's the north of the north. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the high well, the Yankee 100, Stadium, one hundred and fifties plus yeah. street. Yeah. yeah, there was a speakeasy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the idea of speakeasies. I just think of Bugs and Malone every single time I hear speakeasy. Oh, yeah, I always yeah. think of Well, it's a great Be word. That's Ham's Grand Slam. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good word, isn't it? Yeah. And then you just, well, in in films, you have a door that flips over. And yeah, you have, have a, ta- a book, bookcase yeah. with a, <laughs> yeah. a little shutter. And you have in tables it. that flip over. Flip as well. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like, yeah, that's great, isn't it? The uh, the life. So the proprietor of the speakeasy was called Tony Marino. Ah, oh, brilliant! <laughs> Great, brilliant! Hey, Tony! Tony Marino. Great name. And there do well, as you might imagine. Right, because he's running an illegal <laughs> yes <laughs> drinks yeah, establishment. Yeah, yeah. But also in the previous year, 1932, he had killed a woman. Tony Marino. Tony Marino. Yeah. He uh, he killed a woman named Mabel Carlson. Betty. 
um, a homeless woman. He gave her food. He gave her somewhere to sleep. And when he established she had no family, no friends, he got her drunk, poured cold water on her, wrapped her in an ice-cold sheet and put her by an open window in the winter and she died of pneumonia. But she, So she was oh. comatosed or something? She was, yeah, she that. was basically knocked out by alcohol. Was this something that he was convicted of? Or? It was not. Got okay. away with it scot-free, without Scott. Why would you do that? Because he insured her really? for a $2,000 life insurance policy. Really? $2,000 in 1932 would what? be... I don't know, four, four, three, four, twenty. <laughs> well, hang on. Two, surely it would have been worth hardly anything. Two thousand at that time. Well, yeah, and people didn't have any money. They didn't, yeah, the sure. value, the currency wasn't devalued. It was oh, still sorry, worth. Right. Oh, okay. This right, is right, not right. Weimar it's not Germany. Like, yeah, yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah no, right. that, that's right, a, right, fine. Yeah, it was a. It was a wheelbarrows. Yeah, it, it wasn't like that. Right. No, okay. They still money was still worth what it was worth. It's right, just that right. nobody had any of it. Anyway, how much was it? So the, a two thousand dollar life insurance policy in nineteen thirty two is the equivalent of roughly forty three thousand oh, dollars. Okay. Today, so not a lot of money, really. <laughs> not really. Well, if you've got none. It's yeah, but he was... Well, hang on. Who are we talking about? Tony Montana? Or... <laughs> He's, Tony, no, that's Tony uh, Marino. He was in Scarface. Tony Maroney. That's... Yeah. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> Al, Al, Pacino. Al Pacino. Tony... Oh, it's quite close, though, isn't it? Uh, Very Tony good. Tony Montana. Uh-oh. We got a moron here. Is that it? <laughs> the, um... <laughs> Tony Marino. Tony sorry, Marino. Yeah. So, poor old Betty Carlson... Was, her cause of death was bronchial pneumonia, and Marino it would be, yeah, yeah. got his two thousand dollars, no problem. Really? Yeah, which is interesting. Here you are. Someone, complete stranger, mm. signed over a life insurance, and the insurance company didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, at the time I was told it sounded reasonable. This man, Marino, this snare do well. Mike Malloy would drink at his bar. Mm. Malloy, being an alcoholic, would drink mm. pretty much whatever was put in front of him. Sure. They generally reckoned his age to be about 60, but I think he was actually 10 years younger than that. So was Tony Marino trying to do the same method as before? Yeah, well, interestingly, that was suggested to him by one of his cohorts, a man named Francis Pasqua, yep. who was an undertaker by trade. <laughs> so we've got a guy who's already killed somebody for the insurance <laughs> yeah. and an undertaker who knows what to do with the... I'm sure there's a better way of earning a living. It's like Burke and Hare, isn't it? Where Yeah. It's like, well, hang on, Find, finding a body is all very well, but creating the body yeah. for the, well, what we see as meagre, but I'm sure it wasn't meagre, but, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there was a better, on the basis that he was doing high illegality, uk yeah. ookiness anyway... Yeah. He had to top it all by <laughs> murdering people and, and insuring them beforehand, but... yeah. Well, Pasqua knew that Marino had already done in this other woman the year before, because yep. being part of the inner sanctum, the cool. inner circle. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, you know, why don't you get rid of Malloy? He's got no family, no friends, he wouldn't, and he's an alcoholic. If you just, like, give him blows, he'll drink himself to death, and then I'll, I'm me, the undertaker, will take care of the... I mean, how, the do you, how do you go insure another person and, ah, uh, never guess what, <laughs> they've died as well. You know, that. how does that work? Because what happened was that um, Pasqua, the undertaker, yep. used to give uh, Malloy some jobs. So arguably, he say he could go to insurers and say, oh, "Well, he works he, for me." He's an employee, okay. As, right? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. So okay. the idea of being that well, if he does odd jobs, he works for me. So it's yeah. me, it's me, Pasqua, claiming. And he could also be a different name. Yeah, right sure. Right. Okay. So the theory was that you know I'll say I'll insure him and you knock him off. Absolutely. And yeah. then I'll take care of the paperwork and and get and the claim and right. he gets the. What they split the and money, they or split something. the loot, split the right. loops. Yeah, which would have been the same uh, amount, would it? They intended to insure him for more, but they were looking for about three and a half thousand dollars. So now you're up well, into the more. sixty-five thousand. I mean, you can insure someone for whatever you want, can't you? you can yeah, but you have to pay the premium. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So the theory was that uh, Malloy would basically drink himself to death, and then they would. The they didn't have to do much. So he would just because he was. Himself they, himself they reckoned he was on his last legs. Anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, those, those little guys did they look know. like they're on their last legs they all for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
so basically then they start they start recruiting people to the cause there's a bunch of their mates by the end of the whole debacle there's eight people wow. so involved in this conspiracy so i've got some good gangster names coming up oh, good. Gonna, you know, like this. so you've got um four initial conspirators so you've got marino and pasca yep then you've got another man named joseph red murphy red yep and the fourth was dan kreisberg mm-hmm. 29 a greengrocer what is he good at he's there chopping <laughs> chopping dicing things no he's just another weighing weighing things, <laughs> weighing things. he's just another villain he's yeah, a greengrocer okay. but also as a, I'll give you a brief aside so he was a, a lookout for yep. um, Marino's cousin named Marie Baker mm-hmm. he was her lookout and she would rob people um, she would hold up men in the street for their valuables and then once she'd robbed them she'd make them take their trousers off okay chaps chins up Trousers down. <laughs> <laughs> so that they would be unwilling or unable to chase. Yeah, sure. The they'd be too embarrassed or something. Right. And the media referred to her as the pants bandit. Oh, <laughs> that's the only, that's what she she wouldn't be stealing that she, those trousers well, she'd be presumably. stealing their valuables she took their valuables but presumably took their trousers as well they just left put them. them holding their valuables yeah, well yeah. quite yes holding the, it's quite a good idea bring their crown jewels it's quite a good idea to make them not pursue because mm, yeah. they'll be too embarrassed to be running towards a presumably youngish girl yeah exactly. all she has to do is scream they would later be joined by. Four more, which were John McNally, Edward Tin Ear Smith, <laughs> very good, Tough Tony Bastone, <laughs> yeah, and his sidekick Joseph Magliani. Now Tin Ear Smith had a, a wax ear, <laughs> just <laughs> it wasn't was it? the entire ear. Is yeah, he had a pathetic yeah. Oh, right. So they called him Tin Ear Smith. I'd but have called was... him wax ear, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, they weren't the smartest group of people. Right, no. <laughs> Except Marie, huh? so many. There was a, another one called Harry Green, who was a cab driver, and he was enlisted later in our story. So, they decide they're going to whack Malloy. All of those people decide that. Mm. Yeah. They're all in on the act. The initial four. <laughs> lulling yeah, him. need one to get the glass. One to hold the glass. While another one pours. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. One to put a bum out. So, all of these people will want a... They all want a cut. Perhaps not necessarily equal, but... They want a, a piece cut. of the pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the pie gets smaller and smaller. Sure, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so in an attempt to secure some insurance policies, they decide that Malloy will get some insurance on himself, naming Pasqua as beneficiary. Yes. Okay. In one attempt, they said, okay, so you have to identify yourself as Nicholas Mellory, <laughs> and that you're a yeah. florist. Right. Now, Pasqua, the uh, undertaker, obviously he knew florists for sure, funeral sure. flowers, yeah, so yeah. he had someone who would say, yep, yeah, He's, I know him, he's a florist, kind of a, a verifier. Sure. But um, unfortunately, he couldn't, didn't clean up well enough for the insurance companies to want to insure him. <laughs> oh, right. So a lot of his applications came back rejected oh, right. because they said, no, he looks... He looks on death's <laughs> door. Yeah, he doesn't look worth insuring. Right. Yeah, sure, sure. We're, we're not sure that he is currently alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they basically, it took five months before they were actually able to get God, I would, insurance. I would have given up. <laughs> yeah. Why well, so? I mean, well done for them persisting. Yeah. But I would have gone, oh, do you know what? This yeah. is just ridiculous. He, he doesn't <laughs> fit the mould of person who we're trying to insure because mm. he just doesn't because he he's a homeless he's on his last drunk. leg yeah 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 let's just find someone who does fit the mold but anyway mm. they persisted and now like like for instance the the chap who said he'd verify yeah he's technically in on the gig as well yeah uh, whether it's for money or not i don't know but it's just getting wider and wider and wider, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And you know what happens when you get yeah. <laughs> large groups of hoodlums together? Someone's going to squeal. <laughs> <laughs> so after five months, they managed to get three policies yeah. on his life. Two with Prudential and one with Metropolitan Life Insurance. <laughs> they decide that Red Murphy is going to be the man who identifies his body as Nicholas Mallory. Yep. And to claim to be his brother. Okay. So who will be the beneficiary? And they would be, if they got all the policies, the claims made, it would be about $3,500, which is roughly $65,000 in today's money. (music) Having got the insurance covered, they put the plan into action just before Christmas 1932. Their target, Malloy, comes into the speakeasy. Yeah. And Tony Marino says, 
How about you, Mr. You drink, don't you? Alcohol, I mean. I'm giving you an open tab. You can have all you want. <laughs> oh, cheers, mate. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, oh, that's so oh, kind of you. <laughs> I'll just fella. I'll just sit here. Have a toast. A toast, I'll be for sure. I'll have a pint of whatever. No, they wouldn't have done pints, would they? I think it was Glass mostly would have been of... yeah hard liquor, right? Bathtub okay. gin type thing. Give me right. a whiskey. Okay. It's a home still spirit. Yeah, but unfortunately for their plan, yes, Mike Malloy was so alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. that he could consume pretty much anything. Oh right, right, right. <laughs> in vast quantities. So it cost them so, this open bar cost them cost quite a lot of money. Arguably a fortune, yeah, because he would basically he would come in in the morning, drink all day oh god and go home and then he come back the next day and the next day <laughs> he was so alcoholic he was so alcoholic pretty much with that, no effect that makes me feel a little just <laughs> thinking when the kitty came back the very next day thought he was a goner but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away and we're not talking about Miller Lite are we no. we're talking about <laughs> no, we're talking uh, about hard whiskey, whiskey or whatever yeah, yeah. 40% by volume and above oh, Jesus I mean that's yeah. if it's above board yeah, I mean, this is prohibition. It could have anything in it. Oh, so you mean, yeah, yeah. It could be, <laughs> it could be all anything. homemade, yeah. whatever. Oh, uh, chicken here is making scotch. A little alcohol, a little water, a little colour, a little flavour. Boom. If it's home still, then it's... I mean, they, they may not take the heads and tails out, which are like the bits of the... Uh, like the, 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 the heads of the first bit that come out of the still. Yeah. You normally chuck those away. Why do you... Because why? it's just toxic. <laughs> right, poisonous. and the tails just taste nasty. Yeah, the last. Ones. I mean, ironically, <laughs> they should have kept the heads and tails yeah. in because <laughs> they're toxic. They assumed that he would fall and crack his head open, yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. choke on vomit, an alcohol-related incident. Exactly, exactly. And but the worry became that they would run out of alcohol before he died. <laughs> I saw him a couple of days ago, and is he on that bottle? And also, they've spent, I don't know, amount, a qu- quite a bit of money on all of this alcohol. Yeah, so it would be costing them a fortune, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, they're paying insurance premiums. Yeah. Every month he doesn't die. Of course they are, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. have to pay. So, yeah, yeah. obviously, they've paid the initial premiums. Three insurance policies. They must be getting impatient on this investment, though. <laughs> yeah, so we're, st- we're still early on. This is only he's had three days he's been drinking there for like 12 And he's going to have to die in that way isn't it they can't just oh god just someone shoot him because that that's obviously mm. not gonna I mean, yeah. wash is it well no is it no. it's not at all is it? Not, probably not covered by the policy no exactly not to mention it would be death. quite suspicious well yeah, <laughs> he just yeah, took yeah. out a policy three policies and now he's dead yeah exactly. with a gunshot yeah, yeah. mind you tough tony oh yeah he uh who was tony. apparently probably the most vicious of the group the fourth night he basically said Let's just blow his brains out. Let's oh, just right. shoot okay. him. Oh, right. Oh, okay. This is taking so forever. So they were probably going to do it. But yeah. um, apparently Red said, well, let's not go there. Let's, let's not be let's, hasty. Let's switch up the alcohol. So instead mm-hmm. of giving him regular, I say regular, the regular whiskey and what have you. We're talking about overpriced alcohol in abundance. They said, yeah. let's give him wood alcohol instead. Oh, I don't which is basically methanol. Mm. Oh, yeah. Which is um, pretty lethal. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What so, would that be used for, not ordinarily? Uh, paint thinner. <laughs> really? Um, antifreeze. Yeah. Really? Sort of, yeah, that sort of thing. It's poison, I tell you, it's poison. So, if you have 10 millilitres of methanol, you'll probably go blind. 10 millilitres? Yeah. yeah. Um, right. I believe, during Prohibition, 50,000 people suffered the ill effects of methanol because it was used as a substitute for alcohol. Because they were trying to get hold of anything. Because they were trying to get hold of anything. And people would, this is the trouble with buying illegal liquor is it's cut with whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put antifreeze and stuff in it. Mm. So you would basically, you were drinking poison, literally. So he started drinking that. And like, he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of it. He another couldn't one. get enough of it. Give he absolutely loved it, yeah. So they started him off with a few whiskeys and then they basically switched it straight over sure, to sure. wood yeah, alcohol. Yeah. And, um, and he's just drinking this rock gut whiskey yeah, disgusting yeah. stuff uh, laced with it and then they stopped lacing it and just gave it to him straight with alcohol oh. and he's knocking him back and, and he's going oh I'll have another have another have another have another and then uh, <laughs> he goes on like that for a week <laughs> so he drank litres of it <laughs> he's drunk litres and litres of it and he's like, yeah fine fine he must have had a cast iron liver or something I don't mm, know really suddenly out of nowhere he collapsed okay on the floor one night after a week and everyone's like oh wow they gather around this is it this is it he's down he's down well boys I reckon this is it but 
<laughs> then he starts snoring. He's just fallen asleep. Oh, He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he woke up the next morning and said, give us some of the old regular lad. He's wow, back wow. on the liquor. And at no point he was like, you know, my vision's gone foggy or whatever. No, nothing. No if ill effects at all. When the kitty came back the very next day, thought he was a goner, but the cat came back because he wouldn't stay away. Right. Wow. This is why he's referred to as the Rasputin. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, he's more Rasputin oh, than Rasputin. Yeah. Because... Absolutely, is. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. the attempts on Rasputin are only reported. Yeah. Not... Probably didn't happen. Probably didn't happen, this, but this, this guy is... definitely, <laughs> definitely went through a series of... I'm starting to like him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't not like him before, but he, um, well, he's definitely, it's the perfect word, uh, for, uh, nickname for him, du- the durable. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, it's incredible. So by now, Marino's complaining because of course he, he's yeah, saying, yeah. What's the, I'm, what's I'm going to go bankrupt before this exactly. guy's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need the, All the I'm insurance gonna do just is to get, pay the, for the alcohol. To replace <laughs> the money I've spent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tough Tony, carrying his signature two pistols with him all, at all times, yep. decides to uh, to take a shortcut to, uh, that he proposed before. We're going to just shoot him. Yep. Frank Pasca has an idea. He says he once saw a man die after eating raw oysters with alcohol. <laughs> What? That's he claims. But that's like that is like the standard way of eating raw oysters. <laughs> well, that's, oysters. That's how you eat oysters? Oysters yeah. are raw. Oysters. Yeah, yeah. How do they raw? Because in America they quite often cook them. Oh, do they? Oh, okay, yeah. right, fine. Well, so, this is his you, claim. Like in, in Russia, raw oysters and vodka is standard. It's just a thing. Yeah. Sounds quite nice. That's how they come. Is Normal it? vodka just dribbled on a yeah. Yeah, right. a bit of Tabasco in the oyster. Sounds pretty good. Hit of vodka. <laughs> warm you up. So uh, they get these some oysters. They sit, sit them in wood alcohol. Oh yeah, for yeah. a few days. Of course, so they're of course. marinating in, in methanol in poison. <laughs> yep. And uh, he ate them. He complimented the Marino on the quality did. of the yeah. food. Very let nice. out a loud Thanks belch. Yeah, yeah. And was more than happy to continue drinking and having a lovely so time. Several day old shellfish. Yep. That didn't do the trick either. Yep. Hello, my name's Mark Decano and I host the Comedy in a Nutshell podcast in which I talk with those in and around the comedy circuit and most especially the comedians about what comedy means to them. Simon Amstor plus Lena Dunham plus Mr Blobby. I thought that would be a good combo. Every gig you get is somebody else not getting a gig. I've had sometimes I've had people like pull out a notepad and I've been like, oh no, no, thank you. You are a jester and you're here to bring light relief to people's lives. Somebody at the end was like, oh my God, she's dirty. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Thank you very much. My boyfriend says he feels like he has to tread very carefully because he was like, I know that everything has the potential to become material. I can now give to people and be definitely in that moment or having a good time. So if you want to know more about what comedy means to the people at its heart, then hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Comedy in a nutshell, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Fringe, baby. <laughs> So by now, doing away with Malloy has become more of a matter of pride <laughs> than yeah. anything else. They're sure, just going, yeah, it's probably we can't, they're now. failing abysmally to get away with this poor bloke. But what they start coming up with now is just kind of silly, rather than yeah. like inventive ways of killing him. It's kind of daft, because what they, they start putting carpet tacks in sandwiches. <laughs> really? The next big plan is they get a tin of sardines, they open it up, they let it spoil, let it go off for yeah. days... Then they ground up the tin, the sardine tin, into little metal shavings. They made a sandwich with the sardines and the, and the metal shavings. Yeah. And like they put the like, glass sardines. and stuff in it. And they give him the sandwich and assume that the metal and the glass will sure, just yeah, shred yeah. his inside. And he loved it and he asked for more. He wanted another one. That meal was damn good. Wow. How do you chew? It's nice and, cr- <laughs> it's it's nice and crunchy. And yeah. Chopped it's up tin in the mouth full of tacks. He's eating spoiled food, metal shards, and, <laughs> and he's going, yeah, it's great. The what? guy's like Monsieur Monge too. It's like eating an aeroplane. Cool, yeah. You know, it's just oh, mad. Yeah, yeah, it's him. Yeah, yeah. Monsieur Monge. Monsieur Monge. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He had a car. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think Mr. Creosote got the wine list as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is good. I'm, I'm rooting for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid is resilient. Uh, someone said maybe we should just beat him over the head until he dies. Sure. Pass it off as a mugging. By the time they get to January, they decide that maybe the cold air and the ice... Well, I was thinking, yeah, this is, like, over the Christmas period. It's the ideal time for him to try out his 
tried and tested method of wrapping them in a which worked yeah, first time wrap him in a wet sheet and yeah. leave, leave him in the cold yeah exactly so um, the weather apparently one of the worst winters okay, yeah. for, for a long time was perfect they took him out oh, sorry perfect they, in that sense in that sense I thought you said it was for their plan. boiling <laughs> no it was min- minus 14 Fahrenheit wow oh god wow <laughs> so wow, wow. bone chilling what's, what's minus 14 in in centigrade in, in today yeah uh, today dollars <laughs> it must be Minus, uh, yeah, yeah minus because 12. Fahrenheit, because right. yeah, minus zero, seven, yeah, minus eighteen Celsius. Yeah. Okay, That's it's cool. cold. <laughs> it's very cold. It's nippy. Cold. So they've got their acomatose Malloy. Yes, from from the With drinking glass and metal, <laughs> full of glass shaking and metal. around his insides and, they, and poison for weeks. They they drive him to the park. They uh, in the s- snow or cold with a five gallon jug of cold water. Yeah. They. Uh, Stick him on a bench, take off his shirt, yep. douse him with the cold water. Is he, you should have his shirt on. Yeah, you're right. Well, then we know these aren't very smart people. Yeah. The um, <laughs> it, but is he very drunk at this? Point? He's drunk. Yeah, fine. So yeah. body temperature would have been lowered from all sure, alcohol, sure. theoretically. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Well, this yeah, man. blood moves to the surface of the skin. Yeah, but this man is cool. it cools it, down. It's like an iron giant. That's true. He yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. So they left him out in a park in the snow, in the freezing cold, covered in cold water, and then they disappear, skidaddled. And the next day, it turned out. Tony Verino goes to his saloon, and there, asleep in the basement of the saloon, is Bond Mike Malloy. Right. He, he woke up in the park, wandered almost on autopilot to the saloon, if it's where he park. ran into uh, Red Murphy, yep. convinced him to let him in, and he slept in the basement. And he woke up the next morning right. without even so much as a sniffle. When the kitty came back the very next day, thought he was a goner, but the cat came back because he wouldn't stay away. Wow. He said, I had a bit of a chill, and could he have another drink, please? Yeah. <laughs> Back to the bar. Wow. A nip of the right stuff. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> So, now they're getting antsy. We're in the third month. It's just before Christmas they start. Right. The third month. They've worked their way all through January. Mm-hmm. The third month of trying to kill him every single day. Basically. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, now we're into February. That means, or February's approaching, let's be fair. Let's say it's the whole of January, the end of December. Mm-hmm. February's approaching, which means another insurance premium payment is yep. due. Of course, yeah. So, now they're even more desperate, because that's going <laughs> to be more money. Sure. So, they think, right... Let's run him over with a car. <laughs> of course. <laughs> now, this is where they have their friend named uh, Harry Green. So it's the taxi driver. Taxi driver. Ah, yes. Things ain't good in the taxi business. Everybody's walking where they want to go. He agrees for a $150 cut that he will run him down in the street with his cab. Sure. At this point, that's probably the most money anyone's going to get. <laughs> yeah, for a quick, <laughs> yeah. quick job. So, they get him, Malloy, the comatose truck. Sure, sure. Of course. Stick him in the cab. Um, Stick him in the cab? See him in the cab to take him to somewhere, somewhere else. to run right. down. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Marino, Murphy, Tough Tony, Maglioni and John McNally all in the car with Malloy. With him, yeah. And uh, using him as a footrest, they shove him in the back of the oh, cab and they've got their feet on him. Shoved on him. Set yeah, on the yeah. back seat. So they take him out towards uh, a remote area of the Bronx. Sure. They drag him out of the cab, hold him upright <laughs> by holding up each uh, an arm each. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then get out of the way at the last minute. And jump out of the way as Green guns yeah, the yeah. engine. And uh, <laughs> at which point, Malloy is self-aware enough to jump out of the way. Olé! <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> OK. So he wasn't that drunk. And then, so, so they reset. And they prop him back up, yeah, try cool. again. He jumps out of the way again. Olé! But the third time... Oh, yeah. They got him. He bounces off the hood of the car and they drive off. They well, get there is that notion, isn't there, that drunk people usually come out of car yeah. accidents better off. Yeah, than sure, yeah, yeah. They're just more relaxed. Cause, yeah, because the body's fluid and just yeah, yeah. bounces about. Funny you should say that. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> God. So Murphy, he's um, he's going to pretend to be the so-called Nicholas Mallory's brother, Malloy's uh, pseudonym for insurance purposes. Yeah, he's calling the hospitals and the morgues to find out where his brother where is. Where's he gone? Where's Surely my brother? This my person's brother. died. Yeah, but no one knows <laughs> anything about it. He's, the guy has just disappeared. Yeah. Anyway, after five days passed, 
the conspirators are now going, well, now we think we've killed him, but we don't have a body. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, can't make a claim. So we can't make a claim. No, no. So by this point, they're now so desperate. We spent tons of money. <laughs> and spent a fortune. <laughs> we killed a man. Yeah. So now they're thinking, well, now we need to find someone else to kill. <laughs> we no. get the money. No. <laughs> oh, to make oh, it yeah. him. So we've got to fake someone as being him. <laughs> we've got to, yeah, they've got to get someone to pretend to be him. Mm-hmm. To, claim, to claim for him. So they find <laughs> another guy. An unemployed man again. February six, we are Joseph Murray. Why didn't they do this on the on day yeah. four of the? Well, because it became a point of pride. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've got to. It's, you've got to win. This is why gamblers don't quit. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So Joseph Murray, unemployed plasterer's assistant. They get him drunk. They stick him into Harry Green's cab. They're not messing around now. They're going to do it yeah. properly. They've been messing around for a few months. Yes. <laughs> They've been messing around a little bit. He looks almost as dead spit of Malloy. They reckon. They drive him out and they're going to run him down, but they decide there's too much traffic around because it's too early in the evening. So they go back to the bar, dump Murray's body on the ground while they wait for it to get later into the evening. They then go out again, and this time they try it again. They have an attempt at doing what they did for Malloy, and they drive into Murphy. He crunches under the wheels of the car, and they figure he's dead. Oh dear. So they head back to the bar. Now, not only was he not dead, but he was found by a passing policeman. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he went to hospital, so he was fine, Murray. Also, a night watchman uh, happened to see the whole thing. Oh, a night watchman? <laughs> a, a night watchman. What in what form? What was he? He was watching in the night. Just watching? <laughs> just stuff. Watch, just watching. Well, doesn't matter. He's all right all. Yes, he got the license plate. So they were the a bit banged to rights, right. really. Basically, yes. They didn't know this at the time. Yeah, sure. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, but the, the cab had been identified. The driving over of the man had been observed, witnessed. Yeah, sure. The man was in hospital. He would and be there. Presumably for, corroborated. Yeah, I mean, he would be in hospital for like for more than 50 days uh, yeah. with his injuries, but he was alive. But of course, they didn't have a body. Yeah. If they didn't, even if they, he, was, he was dead, they couldn't claim the insurance money because they hadn't. Uh, yes, they now had two missing bodies. They had two missing technically, bodies. Technically, didn't they? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So they all go back. To the bar, and they're thinking, well, do we look for a third guy? <laughs> or what? Yeah. What do we do? Of course. Yeah, At which yeah. point, by a surprising quirk of fate, into the bar walks <laughs> one Mike Malloy. Thought he was a goner, but the cat came back because he wouldn't stay away. <laughs> Have I got a horrid. story for you, he says. <laughs> oh, what happened to me? He says, I was all tired, I'd had a few drinks, and then I was cold, and then I was in hospital. <laughs> That's it. He says, you know what? I'm dying for a drink. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone rolls their eyes. <laughs> Quite literally. Dying for a drink. <laughs> God, he really won't die, will he? <laughs> he got run over. Yeah. Uh, probably at high speed. Yeah, I think they were doing about 50 miles an hour. 50? Oh, wow. Well, and those old rubbish cars. Yeah. There's would... no impact zone on that. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are the impact zone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, now, sadly, they now work out how to do a murder. Really? They decide to uh, Finally. to skip the... They got their eight <laughs> brains together over the course <laughs> yeah. of three or four months and yeah. decided, I think we now have to kill someone now. They said, look, he's, he's not going to die by any of these methods. Let's just yep. kill him. Okay. So they uh, they say, OK, well, we'll get him drunk again, of course, obviously. And that takes some doing, as we've discovered. Yeah, yeah. They have a drinking contest <laughs> where his drinks are all wood alcohol. And they reckon during the course of the drink contest, he had about two quarts of wood alcohol, which uh, for the benefit of... What's that? <laughs> uh, well, it's half a gallon. <laughs> is it? Yeah. So a quart is approximately 1.1 1. 1 in litres. Yeah, sounds about right. So they took him to um, a room in a tenement building, and there they put a gas hose down his throat. Oh dear, that's not and very nice. Yeah. I feel all sad now. Yeah. Yeah. The... Uh, he just put d- domestic gas. Domestic gas. He met his uh, yeah. end. So he wow. finally met his end, yes. And in a <laughs> in a last moment act of <laughs> inadvertent rebellion, he urinated all over Red Murphy. <laughs> 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 but sadly, this was the last gasp, if you forgive the pun, of Mike Malloy. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, it is. I was quite enjoying his journey. Yeah. Absolutely. I know, Michael. It's completely unfair. 
The next day, the body is discovered by the landlady of the building they took him to. Mm-hmm. Dr. Frank Manzella, who's a, a quack doctor, filled in the <laughs> death certificate for Nicholas Mullery. Oh, right, yes, who's in on the... Yep, with... Um, the deal. Cause of death, low bar pneumonia with alcoholism as a contributor. The doctor was supposedly going to be paid $150 for his... Uh, Sure. Collaboration in the deed. And then, he, of course, Frank Pascoe, Undertaker, would take care of the body. Yeah, sure. Could he have died in kind of any way? And he would just would have done whatever you said, low low bar. Could they have just shot him? And then these ooky, ooky people could have said, oh, he died of pneumonia and alcoholism. Meaning they could have saved four months of faffing. Yeah, they could. Well, arguably, yeah. I mean, that's what one of them wanted to do was shoot. Yeah, but I suppose if there is any question about it, then all right, fine. The yeah, bullet yeah. hole the would be a bit of a giveaway. The insurance companies will ask they would want to the see body. the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they'd send in their their people, their investigator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, all right, fine. And the investigator might have been satisfied with a cursory viewing. Like in a coffin yeah. with a doctor who had signed the certificate. That exactly. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. quite a risk. An undertaker. No, I want to inspect. Yeah. A doctor and an undertaker who obviously were on the take, but yeah. they're officially professional exactly. observers. Yeah. Um, so, Undertaker Pasqua gets rid to, is to get rid of the body. Yes. Now, obviously, being a, a bit of a crook, uh, he didn't bother to embalm the corpse because that would take time and money. He wanted him got rid of pretty quick. So, in he was put in an $18 wooden coffin and buried in a pauper's grave. Yep. Um, although he did, of course, bill his insurance company for an expensive coffin and floral arrangements. Holy bank balance! <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Because, you know, quick You can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Murphy successfully managed to put himself forward as the brother of Nicholas Mallory. He got $800 check from Metropolitan Life, mm-hmm. who didn't really look into it. They just took... <laughs> Luckily the, for him. ...the doctor's certificate and said, yep, yeah. he did. You're his brother. Here's some money. All right, I'm going to get some money. However, when he went to the Prudential offices, they said, where can we see the body? And Pasqua, of course, said, well, it's already been it's buried. It's been buried, yeah. <laughs> and on less than 36 hours after he was declared dead. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. And they're like, huh? It's a bit funny. I oh, see so what you mean. 36 hours is, yeah, that is quite pretty close. quick. So, of course, now you've got the insurance company, who, or one of the insurance companies, raising their eyebrows. You've got a witness to a, a, uh, this attack on the, with the Murphy car. with the yeah. car. They're asked, so the police are asking questions about this, the, the, about the cab driver. Inevitably, these will come inside. Also, you've got a conspiracy of all these people who are all want, itching for their piece of the pie. Mm. And as exactly. we know, yeah. the larger the group, the more likely someone's going to ruin it. Kick off. Yeah, because people... they've all been waiting months, basically, yeah. haven't they? And people tend to share information they have with, let's say, one other person outside of the group. Which yeah. means there's at least another eight to ten people outside of Do you the reckon? Group. Yeah. Who know? Yeah. Because people can't keep their mouths shut. I'm like that with all those murders that you did. And after that, <laughs> and after <laughs> all that time, you person. forget who it is that you've told and who you haven't told. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I just told one person about each one. <laughs> Well, you've got um, Harry Green, the cab driver, yes. who's spent a few hours in the company of the local constabulary being investigated about this cab. Because plane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he also hasn't received the $150 he was promised, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's getting antsy. He's a yeah. quick job. Yeah. He's been investigated and he hasn't been paid, so he's not very happy. You've got tough Tony Bastone, the man who wanted to shoot him from the outset, who's been waiting for months. He hasn't had any money yet. And he's a vicious character. His sidekick... Joe Maloney is getting a bit scared of Tough Tony because he's cause Tough Tony is volatile and he's worried he's not going to take his abuse anymore mm. and he hasn't had any money. No one's had any money except this yeah, $800. Yeah. They got their $800 and they went out and bought soup. So uh, people aren't <laughs> very happy. <laughs> and a velvet Elvis. And a velvet Elvis. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's amazing these people, these crimes ever get committed because yeah. <laughs> they're just at each other's throats. So uh, Joe Manioni and Tough Tony and Red Murphy are in the bar. They're having an argument. Now listen, you came into this racket with your eyes open. If any of it gets out, you go out with your eyes open. Only this time they'll have pennies on them. Tony's got his two guns, as we know. Joe yep. Magnione goes to the bathroom. And when he comes back, he's got a gun in his hand. He shoots tough Tony over this argument. Oh, yeah. Twice. And he fell to the floor. He rushed over and took his two guns off him. At which point, in a, in a manner... Reminiscent once again of Rasputin, the shot man leapt to his feet <laughs> and ran out into the street. Oh, right. Wow. So he's Tony. 
tough Tony, yeah. ran out into the street. Right. Well, he's so, earned, earned his name at this point. <laughs> he's tough. He's pretty yeah. tough as well. He's got two gunshots. Well, one of them missed. Or he both hasn't got his guns one's in anymore. Shoulder. But he hasn't got his guns. So he runs out of the room. Oh, so only runs out into the street. Yep. And with two guns, shoots down the street at him again in the middle of the, the, middle of the street. Oh, oh. Yeah, right. Um, he shot him through the heart and he fell down dead. So oh. one of the conspirators is now shot dead by another conspirator. And it was probably seen by loads of people. Yeah. <laughs> so tough tone, he never got his money. Nope. And he's dead. And a passing policeman heard the shots, oddly enough. Cool. Yeah. Um, there was a short chase and Maglione was arrested. Murphy, who was in the bar, he was arrested as well, material witness. So he's taken in. Meanwhile, the Prudential Insurance, their yeah, investigator yeah, is confronting... <laughs> their investigator is confronting Pasqua about his expensive funeral billing. Mm. <laughs> and uh, he couldn't find anyone who knew Nicholas Mallory, despite the fact that he had one hell of a funeral built, <laughs> considering no one yes. knew who he was. Right, yeah, yeah. The police are now looking into Tony Marino, who knows all these people who've been arrested. Yeah. They should. They find out about a woman a year of before. I was going to say, is that Tony <laughs> Marino? Who... Yeah. They found uh, out right, it was okay. Betty Carlson the year before. Um, who died of pneumonia. Who died of pneumonia, and he claimed the insurance, and they said, yeah. well, that's interesting. So he's pulled in. Meanwhile, Dan Kreisberg, the greengrocer, yeah. he's pulled in as accessory to the pants bandit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, all of these people are pulled in for kind, for of, kind other, of different reasons. Things, but, yeah, yeah, and they're just all pulled in. Harry Green, Maglione, Tin Ear Smith, John McNally, and the Doctor all turn state's evidence for uh, to get a reduced sentence. I'll deliver Marino. And they testify against a group that the press is now calling the Murder Trust. Yeah. Which is the key conspirators. <laughs> yeah. You don't like that one? What would you call Uh... uh. <laughs> The bang, the bang gang, bang gang, <laughs> bang, bang, bang gang, the bang gang. That sounds like a prostitution ring. Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? Um, the murder trust. It sounds like the a, murder trust. Yeah, it's like the national, it's like a brain trust. The national trust. without the brains, <laughs> without any trust. <laughs> yeah, they didn't trust each other. Yeah, yeah. Zero trust. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. the, the four key members of the conspiracy all oh, went yeah. to trial. We hear you will kill a man for money. And were found guilty of yeah. murder. Good. They went to Sing Sing and into the electric chair. Really? All of them? Yeah. Four of them? Yes. Next to each other. <laughs> for four in a row. <laughs> on top. On each other's lap. Like yes. the University Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and the good news is... The electric chair managed to kill them on the first attempt. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Is that not That's uh, a hilarious joke? Yeah, all right. Pop Carl. Yeah. The um, the chair that they were all executed on at Sing Sing mm. is the same chair that Andy Warhol did the silk screen was on executed. in 1964. Huh. So oh, that, right. That yeah. ele- famous electric yeah, chair yeah, I know. screen that he did is, is the Sing Sing it's electric the one chair. That killed. Oh. Yeah. Well, the one that killed the, the murder trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The band Primus oh, yeah. recorded a song in, uh, in 1990. Did they? Called uh, You Can't Kill Michael Malloy. Right, right, OK. And there have been not one, but two comedy musical versions <laughs> of the story. There's the 2021 musical play The Man Who Wouldn't Be Murdered, which was on at last year's Camden Fringe. Was it? Yep. Were and you there? I was not there. I was in Edinburgh. Okay. Time. Yep. However, this year, hot off the press, there is a new musical called I... "The Many Deaths of Michael Malloy," oh, yeah. which which musical. Will, a musical, musical, which will be on at Plymouth between April and May of this year. Wow, we should all go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I, there was a an episode of um, Amazing really... Stories, yes, um, called Amazing "One for the Stories. Road." Mm-hmm. That's really is that good recent? fun. It's um, 80s, I think it was. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's actually quite good. There's loads of faces you'd know in it. Really? Yeah. Is it? Is it a drama? It's um, it's directed by Spielberg, written by Spielberg. And... Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. In the 80s, mm. when he was absolute hot prop. Hot prop. Just after doing Indiana Jones. In the 80s. Yeah. 1986. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. The Colour Purple. Yeah. <laughs> I know my Spielberg. <laughs> so he 
He, you mean he just did that one episode? Yeah. Our director was Thomas Carter, but Spielberg wrote it. Well, what was, so what was the uh, what well, the basis was in? Was it was that story? Yeah, I mean he wasn't in it. He, no, no, no. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> the story was my, my you know, it was a two, to a T, right? Yeah, fine. I but they, they, I mean, they took some liberty with the end of it because at the very end, spoiler alert. Oh yeah. He's still alive. <laughs> no, really? <Yeah. laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, that's... Four guys have gone to the chair. Right, yeah, okay. back to the bar, and they're sort of like, this got new owners and stuff like that. Uh, okay, you see yeah. this guy sat in the shadows. I mean, to be fair... By the fire, and he leans forward and takes a drink off the table, <laughs> and it's the same guy. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. that is a better, better ending, if you think about yeah. it. If you end with that scene. <laughs> well, I, uh, I think we should cheers Mike Malloy. Yeah. For Here's, uh, the mic. Here's, Here's the mic. Here's the mic. That's all for this time. If you want to know more about what we've talked about on this episode, then just Google it or something. You can listen to all of our previous episodes on our website. That's www.truecrimediary.co.uk. Please remember to leave a review on your podcast provider if you can, or you can email us. That's stuff at truecrimediary.co.uk. My thanks to Jed and Rue and to all of you for listening, and we'll see you again on the next date in our true crime diary. <laughs>